So just to kind of uh, reintroduce, I work for a chemical distribution company. I'm uh, in the Dallas area. And um, this is similar to uh, what um, Kevin showed as far as workflow automations. Um, but our sales team gets a lot of requests for samples for chemicals and for pricing for chemicals. And we were just overloaded with trying to follow up with those customers. So basically we created a workflow. I created a workflow rule to do automated follow-ups to our customers. Um, and so just from setup screen, workflow rules, I'm gonna go to one of our actual ones. So this one is specifically set up for me. Um, and this screen has kind of changed, but you can view the setup with view configuration. So say a customer sends me a request for a sample. Um, I go in and I change the stage for the potential or deal. We call them potentials um, to sample delivered. And it puts them on the workflow to automatically get follow ups. And so the setup is basically um, on a re record action whenever the potential is edited. Um, and stage is modified specifically that specific field. Um, and I have it set up to where, in this case, it's only if I'm the owner, we have one that, you know, if it's other people on the team, um, I set up my own because I like to kind of play around with a lot of different features. Um, but if, it's, if I'm the owner and the stage is sample delivered, we don't have any instant actions, but you can see I have several follow-ups set up. I think you can do up to five scheduled actions. So here, after the stage is switched to sample delivered, um, then 21 days later, the customer is going to get an email notification. Um, and you can set these up using templates, which we've kind of gone over in this, sec this session. Um, so I have it sending me a copy of the email because I like to see what goes out to my customers. And then the contact associated with that potential, so the customer's email. And it's going to send them this first sample follow-up email. We've kind of gone over a real quick um, view of templates. So I've put it in asking them, you know, basically have they ch had a chance to evaluate the sample um, and to share any feedback. So that's the template I've put in. You can save and associate. And it's going to send them that email notification. It's also going to just create a task. Um, where I put in the status as completed, but I do that so that it shows in the closed activity section um, of that potential that they have been followed up with. So it's easy to see what's taken place, even though it was automated. Okay, so we have the first follow-up set up. Similarly, the second follow-up, um, 81 days after the initial trigger, um, third and fourth follow-up. Um, and this final one is actually a task to we still haven't heard from them to review and close that potential. And also just wanted to kind of go over what that looks like on the potential side. So this is an example of a potential or deal where this customer has already been sent that first follow up. So you can see that in closed activities because I set it to show a task there. So that first follow-up has been done, and then you can use the timeline to see what the upcoming follow-ups are for the automation. And if I change the stage, say the customer responds to me and I change the stage um, to something else, it's going to take them off of that automated track. Okay. So just real quickly, going back, if you were starting from scratch, you would create a rule. Um, for that one, it was potentials. Um, you could put the rule name. And that one was on record action. Anytime it's edited, the specific field that I want to look at or that I want to be triggered. I can say this is only if it's me. Sorry, another one. Stage. Delivered. Then I could put those scheduled actions in 
And here's where you would add the email notification or the task. And then save it. All right. Any questions for me? Was that too fast? I thought it was great. <laughs> yep, Chanik, I think uh, the scheduled actions is something that most of our customers are not aware of too, but I, I have seen it being used for a variety of situations. So yeah, I mean, I definitely recommend everybody to just at least like explore that scheduled action because they just forget about that part and then concentrate only on the instant actions. And this has really, really taken up our pro productivity to be able to automatically follow up with hundreds of customers um, requesting samples or pricing. Right. Hey, Shanique, I have a question. Um, my name is Colton. Um, what what makes those actions stop? Like at a certain point, do is there a trigger on your CRM so that the follow up stop? Like, say, if they place another order or something along those lines? So because I have it set up for a particular stage in our deals process or our potentials process, once it's no longer on that stage, it no longer meets the conditions of the workflow. So that will stop the workflow. Okay. So the, so there would it, it would say it did one or two of your follow-ups, but then the stage finally progresses out and then it's done. It's out of the workflow. Right. So if the customer actually ordered, then we would change that stage to closed one. It's no longer on sample delivered, which is what the workflow was set up for. It won't okay. send them any more of those follow-ups. That's very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm.